guys, the common tendency we're gonna be talking about today is not understanding how to hit the drive and then not understanding how to use the drive. So uh, different racket sport athletes obviously coming into the game. Uh, there's a lot more offense from the baseline coming into the game, a lot more guys, uh, you know, or gals as well driving, uh, whether it's third balls, fifth balls, seventh balls. Uh, plain and simple, there's something to be said uh, with, with understanding how to hit the drive and then, and then understanding that you can use it as a setup or, or, or you can use it to almost like enhance your fifth shot. So, so keep in mind that when you drive, you should be driving to the person who's not gonna hurt you with their fourth ball volley. Uh, for example, you should be maybe driving to the attacker because usually the attacker doesn't like to be attacked. Um, usually the counter attacker doesn't like to attack, but he, he or she, uh, as a counterattacker, loves pace. So, so think about driving to the person, whether it's the attacker or maybe it's just, just anybody, but drive to the person who's gonna uh, almost like enhance your fifth shot or, or volley short that now, uh, that now lets you walk up and then take an easier fifth shot drop halfway in versus having to take a third ball drop from, from the baseline. So plain and simple, you can use the drive to really like enhance your fifth shot. And if you find yourself being very inconsistent on your third shot drop, it would make sense to want to turn the knob a little bit and go, um, look to go away from your drop and start driving a little bit. And then uh, it's funny how when you start driving a little bit, if you get dialed in with your drive later on, it can help you find your drop again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because, I mean, obviously we know that pickleball is all about patience and keeping your errors down. We talk so much about not panicking and trusting the soft game. So when we do find opportunities to sprinkle in some offense or some aggression, like with the drive, we absolutely want to do that and understand how to use that. So I think uh, the biggest thing is it was people either uh, they trust or they buy into that uh, patient soft game idea of pickleball and so they just never use the drive where they're kind of missing out on a little bit of variety or maybe they came from a certain racket sport where the drive is a very natural weapon for them and they're using it incorrectly. So we want you to use that, have that shot in your arsenal, but once you understand what your intent behind the drive is, then it becomes a much uh, better play to be used consistently. I think this is a tool and a great a resource to have um, also if you don't have any sort of offense at the kitchen line. If you're like a true counter attacker and you hit a lot of liftings and you like to counter but you don't have much offense, it would be nice to sprinkle a drive in at the baseline. That way you can get some free points, take the monkey off your back. Plain and simple, it's nice to have some weapons and uh, as we get into higher level stuff, it's very necessary to have some weapons. Okay guys, uh, drill here is going to be, uh, Coach Kyle is going to be acting as a student. He's going to be uh, feeding for himself. Um, I, I would say this is for lower levels. He's going to be feeding for himself. He's going to be stationary. I like the idea of him feeding in a, uh, in a very controlled setting. Why? Because he can work on his technique. He can work on closing his stance. Plain and simple, it's easier for him to hit a ball uh, with me not feeding him and him being in a very controlled setting. He's driving. Um, I'm gonna be volleying. I'm gonna act like he's hitting a third ball. I'm hitting a fourth ball volley. He's gonna be gaining real estate off of that and then hitting a fifth shot drop. So, so essentially he's doing a third shot drive into a fifth shot drop. And he's hoping that my fourth ball volley is short so it enhances his fifth shot. Okay, go ahead. Nice, beautiful. Okay, back at the baseline. I'm gonna feed one to him. He's gonna trap it. Yeah. <laughs> Good, beautiful, okay, very good. Back of the baseline, he's gonna trap it. Uh, look at his footwork, look at his, uh, look how he slowly makes that progression. He doesn't rush, he doesn't totally take off. Um, he's looking to address and assess based on what I do with my fourth. Ready here? Beautiful, good, I like it. Back of the baseline, we'll get 10 of these and then we can change roles. Um, also too, he should be looking to place his drive in zone one, in zone four, he's gonna move that drive around a little bit, okay? Okay, so now, if he sees me float it, let's go, so same thing here. So he's gonna drive, I float it. I would love to see him come in and, and work on turning that fifth shot, not into a draw, but turn it into a closing volley, okay? You guys, what I'm looking for is when Tyson says float it, I see that come up off the paddle. The decision that I'm making is, do I feel like I can get in and close that distance and make contact with the ball net height or higher? 
even if he floats it up, but I feel like if I run up there and I'm playing at my ankles, I still may need to stay with the soft game. But if I can take it out of the air, net height or higher, I have license to stay aggressive and keep the pressure on him. Okay, here we go. Couple more here. Good, back of the baseline, I feed to him. So, so my job as a, as a teacher here, I'm, I'm basically just working on punching my volley down. Okay, I'm, I'm working on uh, maybe gauging out balls too, right? If he, if he swings and I recognize it's maybe going out, I can get a benefit. I can work on my tracking ability. Um, but I'm either working on letting balls go or I'm working on just punching and getting the ball down. Float it. Beautiful. Good, good. So uh, if, I, if I float it, he's still looking to come in, crash. Um, but his main focus is driving looking to address and assess, see what's going on with the situation, and then either drop if the ball is below his hips, maybe it's in yellow or red, or if it's up in his green zone, he's making the move, being explosive with his first step, getting, uh, getting in my vision, and then closing on that, on that volley. And the key word here, guys, is assess, right? So after I hit it, I'm coming to that split step, and I'm making that decision about what my next shot is based on how good Tyson's volley is. Probably the number one thing I see with people who use their drive a lot but use it inappropriately is when they hit that drive, they've got all their momentum carrying them forward and they never control their momentum. So they just charge blindly. It works out great if their opponents float the volley because you can close that gap very quickly. But if Tyson executes a decent volley uh, more linear at my feet and I'm rushing forward you can imagine how difficult that is for me to be stopping and to execute a good drop. So we want to assess being in a stationary position. And from there, if we see that mistake, we can close that gap very quickly. Next drill here is going to be, I'm now going to be feeding. He's going to be driving off of his drive. He's going to be closing. Same sort of, uh, same sort of situation. Uh, he's going to be looking to assess off of my fourth volley, if I float it, he's gonna come in and crash. If I get it down, he's looking to drop. Okay, ready here? Feeding a cooperative return. He's driving and dropping. Beautiful, back at the baseline, same thing here. Feed, he drives, good. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm gonna make sure that my feed's maybe even like a little shorter. The last thing I wanna do is, is put Kyle in a position where he's having to hit a drive off his back foot as his weight's going back. Okay, ready here? Short, he drives, drop, beautiful, good, good, good. Again, 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 he's still looking to crash if I pop it up, nice, good, good, pretty, I like it, very good. Uh, if I know, if I know that he's never gonna hurt me or that he's never gonna swing in transition, it doesn't do anything differently with my fourth and my sixth and my eighth, meaning I, I feel like I'm hitting to a gigantic football field. But if he starts being aggressive in that transition zone, starts making me second guess my four, second guess my six, all, all of a sudden I'm, I'm playing on half a football field and it's much more uh, shrunken down. Plain and simple, he can apply a lot of pressure just by uh, being selective on if he should be offensive in that transition zone. Okay, ready here? Oh, beautiful, good, good, good. Drive, again, 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 ready here, drive. Oh, sorry. And with this play, I would say that's the one that you give up. When people volley accidentally short, sometimes you don't have the ability to get in there. But in my experience, if they're intentionally trying to drop it, it's very difficult to be able to do that and execute that shot when there's that much pace coming off the drive. In here. Nice, I like it. One thing I think about as well, guys, is after I play that drive, I've split stepped on that fifth where I'm playing the drop. Remember, I need, I have a lot of momentum naturally already coming forward. So I really think about lifting, having my body weight go up on this shot. The tendency is gonna be to go out. And what that's gonna do is those are gonna carry a little bit too far and won't be able to get down for you to all the way neutralize. Okay guys, this is our most physical drill here. Um, I'm still acting as a teacher. Coach Kyle's acting as a student. I'm gonna be feeding a return. He's gonna be driving and then dropping on the next one. We're gonna keep this drill continuous. After his drop, he would then hustle his butt back to the baseline, drive, and then drop again, okay? So drive, drop combo, and we are keeping it going. Here we go. Good. Back to the baseline, back to the baseline. I'm gonna float one, volley. Good, I'm gonna float this one, get it deep. 
volley. Good. So I would say that the one benefit on the teacher side in this drill is, is that, that punch volley off of the drive, work on punching it and, and trying to get some depth on it. The, the next ball is more so like a reset for the student to get back and give themselves time so they can drive the next one. Okay, ready here? Drive, good, drop, back of the baseline, ready here, drive. Drop, good, back of the baseline, drive. Drop, good, back of the baseline, drive, sorry. Drop, back of the baseline, good, good, I like it. Oh. Nice, good, drive, drop, up, good, nice. Good, like it. That, that drill may get a little messy. This person may not, you know, may not have time to reposition back at the baseline. The main focus is, is that you are looking to drive using the correct technique, giving yourself plenty of time, having good organization with your hands and your feet, and then off of that, you're just making the adjustment, coming up, hitting the drop, um, turning it down a little bit, and then looking to reposition back in the baseline and do that combo all over again. One thing that I really love about this drill, guys, is it teaches you a very, in my opinion, underrated skill set, which is varying speeds. By me alternating drive and drop every time, if you think about it, if I can get really good at that, I'm forcing my opponent, who's at the kitchen line, to also vary speeds. When I'm driving, they're using my pace and punching it back, but when I'm dropping, they're having to create their own pace. So if I can get really good at varying speeds and zigging in and out of hard shots and soft shots, I'm actually forcing my opponent to be just as good at adjusting speeds as well. Okay, guys, uh, game here is gonna be, I'm feeding a return. Coach Kyle is back at the baseline. He is driving a third ball, and then he can do whatever he wants on his fifth. Um, the little kicker here is that uh, you can get two points in a point, essentially. If, if he were to drive and drop and get up and establish, he would get a point. Uh, as we play the point out in that setting, if he were to win the point, he would get two. He would get a point for getting up and getting established with the drive-drop combo, and then he would get a point for winning the point. Uh, the, the only other time where, where you can get a bonus off of the uh, drive is when you drive, and if, I, or if, if this person floats one, and you're able to come in and close on your fifth ball, you would also get a bonus. Plain and simple, you're getting a bonus by driving and closing, or you're getting a bonus by driving and dropping and getting up and, up and established. Okay, rock and roll. Sorry, it's a tongue twister. Here we go. Oh. Okay, play it out. Point is live. Oh, I take that out of the air. <laughs> okay, score is one to zero. Oh, sorry, score is one to one. I can't be taking that away from him. He could, so Kyle there hit his drive, hit his drop, got up and established. So he would get one. So score is one to one. Game to seven. Game to seven. Rally scoring. Ah. Nice. We are live. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty. Okay, so he got two there, he got two. Score would be one to three. Ready here? As you've noticed, if you have, uh, Kyle has not hit one backhand drive. We are true believers in trusting what you do well from back there. If you like hitting your forehand or if you like hitting your two-hander, plain and simple, find the side that uh, helps you find your biggest source of offense. Whether that's running around your backhand and using the forehand, or, or, or maybe that's uh, that you love your two-handed backhand and, and you can get more pace with your two-hander, but find your best side back there. Pickleball court is not very big in doubles. Find your strength, find your strength. Uh, one, three. Nice, play it out, points live. Yeah, pretty, pretty. Okay, so Kyle got up and established. The score is one to five. He got a point for getting established and a point for winning the point. Game to seven. One to five. Oh. 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 Okay, uh, so he did not get up and establish, and let's say that getting up and established means that you have to get up and at least hit one dink. Okay, getting, getting up and uh, 
uh, fighting, fighting the battle from here is probably not going to do it. Okay, so get up, get established. Uh, score is uh, two five. Five, correct. Yep, yep. Score two two five. <sighs> nice, pretty. Okay, uh, uh, uh. score is three to five. Last one here. Last one here. Here we go. Nice. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One more. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna float it. Four to five. Four to five. Here we go. Drive. Float it. Beautiful. Good. 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 The the drive that's tough for me to handle is when maybe it's a little less pace, but it gets down. Any any kind of and and I'm I'm finding myself looking at my opponent as as he's closing. But it's that drive that just gets like below the net a little bit, and it, and it kind of gets my head popping up. I would say that's the that's the ball that I have such a hard time with. So guys, um, I get the question a lot with my students of when is the best time to drive or where should I be driving on the court. So I've come up with what I call a little hierarchy of of uh, priority of what I'm looking for as far as where to take that drive. So I think a big thing is is most often we want to do this on the third shot because both of our opponents are not up and established. They have to hit the return. Somebody still has to get up and established first. So uh, first on the hierarchy, if there's an obviously weaker player who does not handle pace well, I think regardless of where they're at on the court, I'm gonna keep using my drive uh, over and over again until they prove to me that they can handle the pace and volley it back. Second would be a weaker side. Now this may not necessarily be the worst player or the weaker player, but sometimes one of the players will have a very weak forehand volley or a very weak backhand volley. So if we see that they're taking a big cut or they just have a grip issue or there's not much strength there, we wanna uh, pick on that weakness time and time again. From there, if we're envisioning that our opponents are all pretty solid, um, kind of my hierarchy starts with drive to the person who just returned. Okay, that's the, probably the best uh, thing to do time and time again. Because they're up, uh, not up and established, they still have to split step, they have to control their body before they execute the volley. It just makes it a little bit more challenging. So start there. From there, the next best spot is to drive middle. I call this the confusion ball. If you envision the person uh, at the net reaching towards middle, it's very difficult for them to know if their partner just returned where they're at for this ball. So I know if I'm in this situation, a lot of times I'd end up taking the volley on the full stretch and stealing a ball from my partner because I don't know that they're up yet. So a great confusion ball driving middle. And then lastly, if I'm the player at the net and I'm poaching time and time again, every now and then you do have to drive behind me to keep me honest. But usually to the person returning, sometimes middle, and then sparingly to the person who's established only if they're being too aggressive.